Welcome to Neo 6502 TV, where today we're going to be putting this little bugger through its paces. Hi, I'm Loserbum, back on your screen with some low scripted, medium ish quality, single take, continuous scream of consciousness, retro 8 bit computing content. And today, yep, we're talking about the Neo 6502. If you don't know what that is, see my previous video. I'll link to it below or on a card on your screen. Anyway, it's a single board computer created by Olimex, the best thing to come out of Bulgaria since the Elkart 22 calculating machine. Um, it's relatively affordable. We hope that lots of you buy it so the price can come down. It supports a uh, 6502 processor and a uh, Raspberry Pi 2042 for everything else. And here it is. This is what it looks like. Mine is slightly different because I've got the original development model. This is now a more mature model where on the bottom right you have some dip, dip switches, which I'll get into a little bit later. What it also has on the reverse side, if this thing will load, is this cool little load. Logo. See that? That's the Neo 6502 lo logo, what I created. I invented that, and I'm very pleased to give it to the community. The files are on my GitHub, link in the description below. And the logo was, for those who don't get it, inspired by the original Moss logo of the venerable original 40 year plus years ago 6502. And if you look at my guy, it's also got a, um, it's sporting this sort of uh, 3D printed, skeletonized, uh, no screws needed. It just, the two halves just kind of snap together case. Um, it's kind of open and skeletonized. There's holes everywhere. Um, if you go to Olimex, they'll also sell you one, which is completely enclosed, but fine by that. I kind of like mine. I, you know, this thing doesn't develop much heat. It's just to protect the pins from my fingers and I I think I kind of like it, and it's got the logo on there as well. It's kind of the Caterham 7 of Neo 6502 housings. So enough about me. Let's talk about the widget and what we're going to do today. Today, we are actually going to make this thing, and I'll show you step by step how to turn this thing into a functional Apple II, which is yeah, how cool is that? Running at 400 megahertz? I'm not quite sure if that's really the case. But anyway, um, so very simple. What you will need is one of these cables, which you can get from Olimex and whatever. It's simply a USB cable, which has got this flat thing on both ends, right? So that feels kind of sinful, you know, a crime against uh, engineering, but that's what you need. You plug one end into your computer and the other one into the Neo. And the trick is you press the reset button on the bottom left, which I will do now. Then you plug it in like so. Oh, and you already hear the blunk there because the RP6502 is now merrily reporting as a USB device. There is this RP. RPI RP2. That's always what happens with a um, with an RP2040 when you press the reset button. That's how you load firmware onto it, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll grab this file up here. It's the first one, Apple II 8x600, 400 megahertz, and so we download that. Here we go, GitHub. Uh, all links will be provided below. Before we get into the details, shout out to the creator of this. Uh, so it's you see this is hosted here on the Olimex GitHub simply because of the file size, I guess. But the actual creator is V. Sladkov, um, who is the, the creator. Veselin Sladkov, thank you very much for creating the uh, this uh, and this uh, romulator or emulator. Basically what it does, as explained in the previous video, the little single or, you know, system on a chip RP2040 is simulating the entire hardware in this case of an Apple um, by just like it's got the, the, uh, the pins are hooked up to the process 6502 and the uh, RP2040 is frantically hitting those pins saying, yeah, yeah, I'm RAM, I'm RAM. And just like, you know, the 6502 is saying, oh, fetch address 65, And the uh, memulator is like pretending to be be RAM and pretending to be a graphics card and pretending to be a keyboard. So uh, we have downloaded the uh, thing. Let me upload that. As always, all things take place. So the UF2 files are the files which you need to put onto the device. So very simply, after having done that clever thing of pressing the button and then plugging it in, 
you just drag and drop that file onto that virtual that USB device. It, it uh, pretends to be a USB stick. That's copying over rather slowly. And now I will very quickly go over to the other monitor over here because without you actually pressing anything, the device will reset. Get the sound. Will this work? Oh, no, this won't work because it's not plugged in. Sorry. So I unplug in. Anyway, I'm over here. So I'm taking the thing here now and I am plugging in. I'm plugging in the HDMI. Come on, HDMI. I'm plugging in the um, USB keyboard. It's just a perfectly normal USB keyboard. None of this PS2 nonsense. Optionally, I'm plugging in some sound speakers because I just happen to have some and USB-C for power. And now I shall switch on the power and you will hear the sound. It's coming up. And what do we have? It's an Apple II. With that simple trick, we turn the Neo into an Apple II. Allow me to go over onto the other machine. And the reason why we're doing this with a camera, I'm filming here in front of my keyboard, is because of bit banging, which I'll get um, into at the end of the video. But uh, so here I am, um, and I can interact with the keyboard. Now the Apple II, there's actually one over two here, didn't have up, down arrow keys. So the way to use this sort of quick start menu, so in the image which is provided for Apple, you you have a number of tools and the way to access them is via the the, the keys so if I want to say I want to run load runner which is an absolute classic video game I press L and then press enter that's taking me into that subfolder and then just press enter to start loader system and it's running load runner hit space and now I have to remember the keys again they didn't used to be that many arrow keys yep okay so we are jkli and I suspect space to dig a hole uh, if you don't know load, load runner no it's not is it space no it's not space there's a button to dig a hole and I don't know what that button is I need to find up oh, there it is it's button O. O is your hole digging button so I'm gonna climb around here collect all the boxes yep so i've dug a hole i can get that guy i've dug another hole ah. okay we got load runner um i can try and reset this thing hang on uh, let me see so pin number nine i'll get in a moment can i reset via the keyboard Ah, um, so um, there is a reset button active on here if you connect the bus pin 40 to the UX pin 9, um, which when if you've got the new model is done via a dip switch, but that doesn't always work because it's the reset button of the old Apple II um, wasn't actually a real hardware reset. It was more of a software reset, which in this case has actually dropped us down into the Wasmon, which is kind of neat. So it's a real Apple II down to the bugs. So we're just going to power cycle the thing which boots at an astonishing three speed three two one and we're in so load runner another game here droll a classic i played this i have a floppy probably completely broken of this somewhere so just press d twice until you're on droll um press enter loader system here i believe the keys were j and l for left and right and a and b for, or a and z for up and down let's try that no sorry it's the arrow keys left and right um the a and b a and z keys for up and down and space for fire so it's a whoop it's a sideways it's, it's a sort of mix between a sideways platformer shmup kind of thing little whoop i died somehow yeah, and here we go. So, and what I have to say, okay, the colors are a bit, yeah, they're not great, but the, the feeling of the game is actually quite um, surprising. Oh, now I can't shoot because I got magnets on both sides. Um, yeah, it's sort of a mix between load runner, a side shooter, a platformer, uh, and I seem to have gone onto a higher, harder level. Um, anyway, I uh, really like Droll on my original Apple II, which is over there, which I haven't run in years. I played that 
the Jesus out of this game. Uh, and what I want to say is that the feel like the timing is actually quite convincing. It's pretty bang on, right? It's not a sort of clunky emulation. Keyboard, React. So, yeah, well done. We have emulated. Let's see if reset works here. Yep, reset. So, F12, if you have that special jumper set, then F12 is the reset. Um, what else is on there? Wavy Navy. We've got to go to that one. Oh, we'll do Tetris first. Why not do Tetris first? Right, so Tetris, it says Game Boy Tetris. So, I assume because the... Ah, here it says Apple the bottom. Apple II conversion. Uh, and you can hear it's trying to do the sound, but it's fighting hard. The timing isn't quite perfect on that. Um, but if you saw on the title uh, page, that was ported from the Game Boy to, um, to the Apple II because uh, the Game Boy actually did have... Um, can I, like, uh, switch the music off somehow? Ah, uh, no. But anyway, I'm, I'm just going to reset this. Yes, so apparently uh, the, the Game Boy, uh, which was ran a 6502, uh, was easy enough to port to Apple, and somebody did that, and it's available on this image. So loads of cool games. Uh, we'll get into the sound in just a moment. And the last one just for today, Wavy Navy. Uh, so I played that ever-loving bollocks out of this on my original Apple II, literally probably 40 years ago. Is it that long? Yeah, easily 40 years ago. There we go. And oh, uh, you hit space. And what's important here is you have to press K for keyboard. All right. So now I'm in keyboard mode because I'm not using it's originally designed for paddles and jo or joy port. And the joy port on the Apple was analog. So that, that was that always basically the X, Y paddle and then S to start the game. And so I can use the arrow keys left and right. I can use the space bar to fire. And it's a shmup. It's kind of space invaders and whatnot. So with the keyboard, it just doesn't have the feel because in the original one with the joysticks, this was super analog getting left and right. You could get into a very, very, very zen mode. So I'm just going to get out of that one again. Um, and I want to demonstrate one last thing. The reason why this video took so long to make, apart from distractions and whatnot, is that this... Um, this particular image with the Apple emulator only dropped a few weeks ago. The original emulator or uh, images had Karatika, which is an absolute, oh, that's a banger of a game. The problem with that one, uh, the sound's about to get a bit rough, um, it is a game, again, which I pr played the crap out of, but the controls don't work. So what happens is, uh, let me see if I can just fast forward through this rubber. <laughs> Now, haha, that is the temple of the Shogun where we must karateka our way to. Ah, hear that sound. Ah, that's, that's some bitey sound. Right? And no matter what I press on the keyboard, he always moves right. And this leads me to believe, um, because if I go to Wavy Navy... Uh, and uh, load that, and just start it with the default... Right, where it, it's going to try and be controlled by a paddle. Come on, you can do it. You were there just now. There we go. Uh, start the game. Right there, you see how my 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 uh, spaceship or my 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 boat ship actually is going all the way to the right. And that's because it's expecting an analog control. Right, with a you you have a twisty knob with a resistor, and I assume that the value of zero is the right hand side, just like it is on Karateka, because um, the emulator currently, well, I don't have any paddle or any joystick plugged into here. However, we have have this thing, right? This is the um, Olimex uh, nunchuck with the UX adapter. That should actually plug in no problem into the 6502 down there, um, into the Neo 6502, and then provide like uh, analog left, right. Um, so yeah, that would be really cool if we could get that to work because those analog joysticks had a, had a certain feel to them, which are very, very specific to the Apple II. Anyway, enough of the ranting. You can now do this yourself. Um, uh, there, there's, you can get into basic. Let's go into basic. Basics there. Yeah, so, yep. Prodos, um, 1983, original copyright. And print. Oops, oh, there it go. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, um, awesome. Uh, uh, semicolon is here somewhere. Sorry, I, I've got a 
non-UK US keyboard. I'll give it one more try. There it is. Play up. Ten. Run. Yay! Basic works as well. And uh, if a reset here just breaks the basic, uh, just stops the basic, doesn't actually um, doesn't actually reset fully. So yeah, that's that's how it is. So you have all the things. You have basic. You have wavy navy. You have load runner. You have droll. All of them very very good games and uh, kind of happy. So now you, I have to explain why you're watching this on this slightly wobbly webcam, which is pointed at a screen instead of the usual quality kind of of um, recording with or which you're used to normally I record through this little device which changes HDMI and um, and it's got USB going out and that just presents as a USB video device well that's because of a thing called bit banging so the, the Neo 6502 doesn't have a graphics chip literally the only two graphics chips which are on here uh, are the, the, the 6502 processor and the RP2040. And so what's happening is that the RP2040 is bit banging. I love the term bit banging. Um, where, um, and, and faking an HDMI or a DVI interface. Uh, here from Wikipedia, bit banging is a term of art for any meta data transmission that employs software as a substitute for dedicated hardware. So normally in a computer architecture, you'd have a graphics chip and a processor would communicate with a graphics chip and say, hey, old chap, would you care to draw a triangle or a square? Or these days, you know, you can not just put a bunch of triangles there. You can actually put 3D scenes into the graphic chip and say, hey, render it from this particular uh, perspective. In the case of bit banging, um, none of that, right? Um, because, you know, the graphics chip takes all that, does the calculation, and then outputs a nice HDMI video signal. Well, in this case, the RP2040 um, simply has some of its output pins connected to the HDMI port and it's just banging bits on there, right? These are not, you know, a bit is also a signal going up and down. So you, I imagine this RP2040 really frantically banging away on these HDMI wires saying, oh no, I'm a graphics card. This is a real HDMI signal. Uh, all the while it's also bit banging the memory and it's receiving the USB and it's bit banging the sound. That's why the sound is a bit, ugh, is a bit spicy. And my monitor here is more forgiving, right? It just sees this HDMI signal, which is frankly being bit banged by the RP2040, and is saying, "Wow, groove, baby, right? This HDMI system has got signal has got some rhythm here today." If I plug it into my HDMI to USB capture device. I think no HDMI signal I ever seen before. I don't know who you are, stranger, and is just refusing to see it. So yeah, that's what happens with the big bit banging. So. Uh, yeah, I got got uh, this article from a couple of years ago when it was first done, I guess, on the on the Pi, and that's the the library that that they are using. So, um, with all of that, what can we add to this? Um, first, a quick word back to um, to Veselin Slatkov and the guys over at Olimex. Um, I'll share a video in the description below uh, from a channel called Asianometry, which I like a lot. They talk about the history of computing, Wang, HP, and how these great companies went up and went down again. And a recent one, relatively easy, recent one, two weeks ago, is about the unlikely rise and collapse of the Bulgarian computer industry, which is great. It's about 26 minutes long. And before the wall came down, Bulgaria was like the um, high-tech IT industry hardware guys. They made chips. They made hard disks um, in the Warsaw Pact behind the Iron Curtain. And it just so happens that they did a lot of cloning of 6502s of apples um, um, and things like that, which is presumably why we have this pool of expertise of people who can just say, oh, well, hey, I have this funny little piece of thing here. Let me make it behave like an Apple II. And by the way, in the same folder, there's also an emulation of an Auric. I haven't tried that. The Auric one is a... Uh, I'd call it somewhat obscure UK computer from the early 80s, also on the 6502, and I presume... Um 
this is uh, kind of the same thing. What can I add to that? Oh yeah, other things which you can big bang, right? A Raspberry Pi, it's not perfectly bit banging, but um, there's a, a program where you just hang a piece of wire from one of the I.O. pins and you run this thing and it presents to, pretends to be an FM transmitter. It even does the RDS, it even does stereo and things like that. Now, I would not recommend doing this because it's not designed, there are side lobes, you will probably be leaking in all, into all kinds of frequencies. I can't do it myself because I have an airport not too far away and I don't want the feds to show up on my door. So that is the fun of it. Um, just to bring us to the end, a couple more things I mentioned about the new version. So if we look at the instructions here, it says somewhere, where does it say? Sorry, yeah. Um, to use F12 as a reset button, you have to connect pin 9 of UX to pin 40. To use F11 as NMI button on the Oric, you have to connect for, you know. So um, yeah, there are certain, normally you would do it with jumper cables, which is what I've done here, which is why I could do that uh, reset with F12, but on the new and fancy latest version, you now have these dip switches at the bottom right, which allow you to do that that switching. You see here, pin 9 going to, to reset. So that's, that's kind of convenient, right? So that you don't have to muck about with these things. Um, in uh, the description below, I will be sharing the uh, public um, uh, file for if you want to print your own little housing here with the cool logo and the cool Caterham 7 kind of stuff. Um, that's a kind of it for today. I'm hoping to find some time to dig through the instructions here on how to make your own um, images because um, there's no easy way, right? It's a monolithic UF2 file, which is the format that the um, RP2040 supports. There's no um, USB drive. There's no SD card. So I can't put my own software on here, but I really, really want to do that. Uh, I'm, you know, it says things like, uh, you know, check out platform here, see make. Uh, every time I see, uh, you know, every time I see instructions which have uh, make in them, I reach for my bottle opener. And the real challenge here is that I've managed to balk my Raspberry Pi Linux instead uh, or Raspbian installation. Got to get that working again. And then if I actually manage to create my own image and get it running on this device, um, that'll be the subject of an upcoming video. And why would I do that? Um, I didn't show it, but by pressing the number keys, you can access multiple drives. So uh, it supports multiple dr disk drives, this, this um, Apple II emulator. And that means we can play Auto Duel, an absolute classic of a game from Origin Systems. Um, yeah, sort of very open world. It's kind of the the very proto 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 um, maybe yeah, grand it's somewhere between Grand Theft Auto and maybe some components of Elite. You have to have missions. You can upgrade your vehicle. Super addictive for the time. It came out in 85 for apples, and it needs multiple discs. So, um, you know, one is the game disc, the other one is the uh, the landscape disc. And then, of course, the big, big winner is Ultima 4, right? And the cool thing is I still have a box for Ultima 4 for the Apple II, so it would be legal for me to make that image. So, yeah, uh, really look forward to that. And imagine this thing at the moment priced at a quite competitive 30 euros, still hoping one day for the price to come down but yeah nice piece of kit right there so with that i think that's enough for today um remember to check out loserbum.com you can reach me if you have comments ideas uh, inspirations insults you can reach me on mastodon and new you can also find me on blue sky i don't go to that other uh, site anymore well with all of that you are the internet i'm loserbum you are all a bunch of neo 6502 aficionado bloody legends and I am out of here.